Hi, I'm Stefan Ringelschwandner and in this video I will talk about my favorite test image to stress test LUTs. I'm going to talk um, how it's designed and I will also talk about um, this Lego set here which can help us to understand certain things we first perceive in our uh, test image and I want to close the gap between the test images and real world footage. At the very end I will also explain the limits of test images but first let's get started with the color wheel. So here we have our well-known color wheel in which primary colors red, green and blue are arranged in a circle. Similar colors are next to each other and the complementary colors cyan, magenta and yellow are opposite to our primary colors. We can unroll this color wheel and scale it so it will fill the entire screen. Next we overlay a grayscale gradient over the image so that there is a 0 to 100% saturation range from the top to the center and a 100 to 0% brightness range from the center to the bottom of our image. This defines lightness as a range of values of each color in a U range, from full saturation to zero, rather than actual luminance. First let's take a look at the Kodak 2383 LUT by DaVinci Resolve. I applied a node underneath where I crank up the contrast and move the pivot around. I can also activate a color space transform and change the color space to Arilog C, for example. We can observe that we always have a smooth transition between the hues and a nice transition from the top to the bottom of our image. Now let's take a look at the first bad LUT. This is what it looks when I activate the LUT. If I increase the contrast, we see that we no longer have a smooth transition between our hues. This LUT was designed for Arilog C, so it is fair to apply a color space transform, um, but we are still seeing the same issues. For comparison, this is what it looks like when we adjust the contrast after applying the LUT. So it looks different. And if we increase the contrast and pivot in this node, we see that we no longer have a smooth transition from top to bottom. But from my understanding, this LUT was designed um, to be at the very end of the node tree, so I think it is fair to change the contrast in the node before the LUT. And I know um, some people say, well, I don't grade test images, I grade real footage. So let's take a look at what this LUT does with real life images. So let's have a look at this test image here. Um, this was shot on a Blackmagic Pocket Camera 4K. And in the first node I applied um, a color space transform from Blackmagic to Arilog C. And in the second node I adjust the contrast. And if I change the pivot we see a nice transition. And now I will apply the LUT. And we can see um, here are some issues in the transitions between the hues. So here we see um, we have a dark blue, then it goes to a brighter blue and a dark cyan color and a bright cyan. And this is exactly uh, what we see here in our test image too. So I think this test image is really helpful and um, sometimes when you apply a lot to real footage you may think well it looks good in this area until you have a blue jacket and then you enable it and then you see, oh, okay, it's um, it will break my image. So let's move on to the next LUT, um, bad LUT number two. So here we have our new LUT. I enable the node with a LUT in it. And we can spot some um, artifacts. Um, we don't have some problems here in the highlights. And I switch to Sony S-Log. Um, so because um, the LUT expects Sony S-Log as input. Then it looks a little bit better, but still um, it, it doesn't make sense that we have here a magenta spot in the highlights. And if we crank up the contrast um, and change the pivot, we can really see some strange artifacts. And let's switch to our Lego set. 
and um, I did a color space transform from uh, black magic white gamma to Sony S log. I applied the LUT, everything looks fine, but if I change the contrast, um, just the contrast before the LUT, um, we can spot here those uh, magenta uh, colors in the yellow highlights. And if I adjust the curves, um, we can make it more visible. And it's pretty obvious that, yeah, that, that this is not perfect. And here's another example. Um, this is without the LUT. Um, this is a color space transform to Sony S-Log. We apply the LUT and um, at the first glance it is not really visible. But if we look very closely, we can see the uh, magenta in the highlights. And if I increase the contrast here, um, yeah, it's really, really visible. Yeah, so let's move on to the next LUT, LUT number three. I enable the LUT and we can immediately spot the hard edges in the green area. I switch to our test image, and this is without the LUT. And now I will enable the LUT. These LUTs you've seen here came from very popular and expensive LUT packs, and the people behind those LUTs call themselves professionals, and name clients like Netflix, Sony, Universal, Nike on their websites. But none of these LUTs I've tested so far are professional, quite the opposite. Next, I want to talk about the limitations of the test image by showing you some real professional LUTs designed for red color space. In the first node, I transform the color space to red and at the first glance, everything looks fine. We see a nice gradient vertically and between our hues. However, if I push the contrast further, we now notice some artifacts. And this is not because it is a bad LUT, but because our test image only covers the RGB color space. We can apply a color space transform to red color space, but it is not the same like capturing data coming from a real red camera. So keep in mind that the test image has limits and not every artifact we see means that the LUT is bad. We have to be really careful with testing and judging a lot based on test images. But hopefully this video helps to understand that a test image can be very helpful. A test image allows us to get a first impression of a lot. And after that we can dig deeper into the area that looks weird. By the way, the test images and the LEGO footage are available for download on my website for free. You can find the link in the description of this video. So that's it. Please comment. I really love to hear your thoughts on the topic. Have a nice day and see you next time.